Welcome to episode 109 of the Schmidt House podcast. I'm your host, Zach. Today, I wanted to give you a review of the first season of Ahsoka that came out on Disney+. Plus. There will be spoilers, so if you haven't watched it, you have been warned. Before I begin, I wanted to remind you that I do have live shows that stream on Tuesday evenings at 8.15 SAS time. I've also started a Substack, so if you want to read some articles that I put up there, uh, you can do so at the Schmidt House post. If you would like some merch, you can check out Magenta Zoo. There's magnets and stickers and stuff like that. Also, follow me on social media, especially Twitter. Links for all of that stuff is in the description box. Now let's talk about Ahsoka. All right, so Ahsoka series has kind of wrapped up here on Disney Plus, and I wanted to give a review on it and talk about some things about the series, things I liked, things I didn't like, and uh, mostly about the cast because I think that the series relies heavily on the cast. But um, first off, I wanted to say that this was a better show than lots of the other Star Wars stuff that Disney Plus has put out recently. And I did have high hopes for it. I thought it was going to be good. And I think that it was about as good as it could have been uh, just with the current case of the way that Disney is running Star Wars and stuff like that. Um, You know, I've I've watched a lot of Star Wars is one of my favorite series. So I've I've talked a lot about it um, on the podcast and it's it's something I really like. So I've tried to give Disney Star Wars as much play as I can, I guess, or as much as I'm willing to give them. And uh, I didn't watch Andor, I couldn't get into it, I watched like the first two episodes and it was boring as shit. And, uh, you know, I do like Ahsoka, Ahsoka's one of my favorite characters, so I was excited this. And I do like some of the stuff that uh, Dave Filoni's put out um, and his supervision of it, uh, or supervision of Star Wars, I should say. So I was kind of excited for Ahsoka. Ahsoka is his, um, you know, his baby, the character that he's put the most effort in so i was expecting things to be a little bit better than the woke stuff that we were getting before and uh it it does it it's better but not great on lots of that front and i'll talk about some of that stuff in in a second is it as bad as kenobi uh no definitely not is it as bad as mando season three i would probably say it's a bit better than it's better than season three of mando um season two of mando is kind of like hit and miss because they just had just filler episodes which is garbage and same for a little bit in season one but season one mando i think is kind of the best star wars tv that they put out but this ahsoka series was was not bad uh i i watched clone wars and um and rebels so i was familiar with lots of the characters lots of the storylines and stuff like that um so yeah like i said it was kind of as about as good as it could get i do have there are some problems with it um one of them being the girl boss situation which i think is kind of just you know (laughs) the way it is with disney star wars i hope it changes but there it definitely doesn't seem to be that way but definitely lots of girl boss elements in it uh rosario dawson who plays ahsoka i think does okay in the role i do like her in the mandalorian series i think she does better uh playing ahsoka in mando than she does actually in this show I found that she just played the character a little bit too arrogant, which Ahsoka isn't really like that in the other series. Um, I think she fits the part. She uh, does it. I think some of the her fight choreography could be a little bit better. It's always like, I, I don't know why they've done this basically in Star Wars. It's like, or Star Disney Star Wars, it's like, you know, all of a sudden you're getting hit, you lose your helmet, all of a sudden this, and then you have plot armor to, to like, up the ass, and this series really suffers from that type of stuff. Um, you know, er- early in the in the series, Sabine gets stabbed with a lightsaber, like so many other people, for, like, it killed Qui-Gon Jinn, you know, one of the, one of the Jedi greats, but any random person, it seems, these days in Disney Star Wars can g- get stabbed in the stomach the same way that Qui-Gon does and they're able to survive which is a which is a big problem yet they run around throwing their lightsabers around and just like hack and slashing absolutely everybody and it, it it's it's really dumb and they really need to fix that and get back to um, some of like the better lightsaber duels now I do understand lots of Dave Filoni's um, inspiration for this stuff uh comes from george lucas which rightfully so and there's a heavy uh leaning on like the samurai narratives and stuff like that you definitely see that come through in the series so if you're a fan of that uh you'll probably appreciate that but uh yeah back just to a couple things about rosario dawson 
Uh, and if you understand the Clone, uh, the Clone Wars and Rebels animated series, you'll probably like this just a little bit more. If you haven't seen those, uh, there's some storylines and some um, probably some creative liberties that I think the crew took with those shows that aren't as mainstream uh, or kind of cohesive with the main series of Star Wars. So if you haven't seen those, like this series will not fill in the gaps the same way that it does if you've watched it. And that's what I mean is when you look at Ahsoka's character arc, it just there's some things that don't really fit all that well. Um, don't don't mesh if you've only watched the main series this will be a little bit more confusing or if you've only watched Mando this definitely will kind of come out of uh, left field here but um, yeah Rosario Dawson does okay in the role I was really hoping for more from her but I honestly I don't blame the actress on this one as most times that I don't I think it's the production the writing all of that type of stuff um, coming down with the massive controls that uh, Disney is able to and Kathleen Kennedy. The amount of times that I've heard the, her name being, uh, you know, you see a tweet or something like that. Oh, yeah, Kathleen Kennedy's fired. Everything's going to change at, at Lucasfilm. Nope, never happened. You've been hearing this for like four or five years now. It's not going to change. It's only going to get worse. And this series definitely suffers from it. Uh, Dave Filoni's vision and uh, direction, I think, again, probably the best choice to have him helm this apart from anybody um, he definitely, I think, understands Star Wars better than probably anybody else, except for maybe George Lucas. But does a does a I would say a good job in the direction and the story that he wanted to tell. Did it a lot better. Like I said previously, there was no mid season slump. Uh, um, but it does have uh, um, problems with the finale, which is just kind of run of the mill for the way that things are going with Disney. There is a Anakin. Um, is in an episode there. Uh, I guess maybe a couple, uh, you know, in, in different forms, which I'm I'm okay with. I do like Hayden Christensen. I think that he uh, was the right person for to play that character. The de aging on him is better, but I just don't see Anakin adding a whole lot of value to this series as far as the story that they actually wanted to tell. I found that like when he's on screen. And the way that they're doing like the flashbacks and stuff, it's all just for the member berries. It's not actually um, providing much value as far as like the development of any character. I get well, I miss, people would probably disagree with that because it de definitely does progress uh, Ahsoka's perspective on the way that she looks at things. So um, maybe it does have a little bit of merit there. But it was it was good to see Anakin Skywalker and Hayden Christensen back in it. So during the Clone Wars flashbacks, like. It's, it was kind of good to see that, but I just, I'm just i pretty sure the only reason they did that was just for the member berries. The, now, the de-aging on Anakin was a lot better than it was in the Kenobi series, but, um, but yeah, I think they could have utilized him a little bit better. There's a new character called uh, Balin, whose actor Ray Stevenson died, and he is actually my favorite character and actor in this show. I think he does a really good job. The character is interesting. He, his on-screen presence is just top-notch. And uh, they definitely left it a way that there's going to be answers needing to be, or questions needing to be answered. And however they follow this up with whether it's a second season or if it's in a Filoni-verse movie, which is probably more the way that it's going to go. I really wanted to see his character fleshed out and see how that they go through, you know, um, ending his story arc and stuff. And unfortunately, the actor died, so they're not going to be able to answer that. But that was the mo he was the most interesting character. He was the best part of the series, in my opinion. Uh, Sabine Wren, um, who played that one, Natasha Lou Bordizo, something like that. A uh, very good casting, but poor writing for her arc. I did not like that they're trying to you know force this whole Jedi narrative, and and everybody has the Force and the girl boss stuff. That just really seeps through with her character, and it honestly kind of takes her back. I think she, the Sabine was well acted, um, good casting, just very poor direction for her character. And that's all writing, not the actress's fault. Um, but when I see when I see uh, Natasha playing Sabine, that is who Sabine resonates in my mind. So I thought they did a really good casting. The acting was good, just really poor execution of her arc. Uh, Ezra, who plays Ezra, Iman Esfendi. 
I I don't know how to say that. Anyways, Ezra Bridger's in the show as well. Um, I think he could have been acted a little bit better. There's some points in time where I'm just like, I don't think you watched enough of uh, Rebels to be able to understand Ezra enough to be able to do the character justice. Um, I think the direction of his character was really good. There's some cheesy points that I think are revolving around his character that probably, like, I think the showrunners probably could have done things a little bit better on that front. So that is uh, a little bit concerning that way. But um, also, the, he wore blue contacts to match Ezra's eye color, and it was just really, really distracting whenever I'd look at his face because it was just like that's all you see. It was just a really, really vibrant blue eyes. I think they probably could have toned that down because it just it, like that was the one thing that was kind of taking me out of his character whenever he was on screen. Uh, Shin. Shin is a, a new character as well. So she is um, Balin's apprentice. I didn't really think she added much value in this show. Doesn't have a whole, t whole ton of lines. Um, you know, as even though she is an apprentice, it definitely seems that Sabine was able to kick her ass when needed. And it was just, it was just, that was basically it. She was just cannon fodder for, for Sabine to be able to develop her skills with the force. So I, again, I don't think that was really necessary. Uh, Thrawn. Uh, Thrawn was played by Lars Mikkelsen. Really, really good. Um, he also played, voiced him in the um, in Rebels, so he came back to uh, to play that character. Thought did a really, really good job. Menacing on screen, uh, very calm, cool, and collected, and just like they they did the on screen portrayal, probably the, probably the best of anybody that was actually translated over from Rebels, and um, there he doesn't look like as far as like transfer and, and people said the same thing about um cad bane in um in the boba fett series is that wasn't translated over nearly as well um and there's just some facial features that i don't think match up as well but that's just me nitpicking i don't think that that's actually nearly as big of a deal uh as i'm making it as far as other characters we got um harrison Dooler, harrison doula and her son Jason, who came from uh, Rebels as well. No, um, oh, what's his name? He appeared in Mando. I can't remember what his name is. Uh, Zeb. Zeb didn't appear in this. I kind of expected him to. Um, Chopper, the droid, made an appearance. Who else do we got here? Oh, yeah, Morgan Elsbeth. So that was a character from uh, Mando season two. Had the, she was in the, um, she was the, uh, magistrate in that one planet where Mando met Ahsoka so she came back as well um, and I think that's pretty much it oh Anthony Daniels had a, a one scene cameo as C-3PO which was kind of cool uh, David Tennant playing Hu Yang who is the uh, Jedi droid uh, also another repeat character but that's just the voice I think that's pretty much it as far as casting but um, I think the casting overall was pr was pretty good. The characters that they had in there all meshed really well, all played together really well. So I, di I did like seeing kind of the translation from uh, the animated series over to uh, live action. And even, like I said before, with Anakin, um, you get to see him finally in his Clone Wars outfit and, and during some flashbacks and stuff like that. And it's... It, it's it's good to see if you're a fan of those shows i think you'll probably be a fan of this i did kind of wish that the ghost crew was all together in the show that would have been cool to see everybody kind of back in action as one but again they're I, just really expecting that this is and this may have been announced i'm just kind of spitballing here but um you know the filoni verse movie i think that's probably the direction that they're going to have they're going to have boba fett they're going to have Ahsoka series they're gonna have Mando and I think that's probably all of the ones that are set in that time period uh, and uh, so those are all kind of gonna come together and um, yeah we'll see how we'll see how that goes and I think that that's probably what lots of the stuff is is kind of gearing towards and we'll see kind of a big Avenger style movie that has all of these characters that have kind of been interacting over the last little bit uh, in the Disney plus series. So that's kind of what I'm expecting. So maybe, you know, and Thrawn will probably be the big baddie in that one. So everything's kind of just leading up to that. So we'll see how that plays out. Um, I'm not kind of expecting a season two of this, but who knows? We'll see how it goes. Um, as far as the series as a whole, I thought the season finale was the weakest episode of the season. 
it had very poor fight choreography just really cheesy action sequences and um just overpowered characters that have plot armor and um i i think it's it's about time that they kind of fix some of those issues because even even the other disney plus shows like um kenobi and mando suffered from from similar things but Disney has a lot of problem with their se- season finales. Um, you even look at other shows like in the Marvel, uh, the Marvel universe and stuff with um, oh, what's that show that just Secret Invasion. Same thing. Just they they have all of this hype and build up and then just a dog shit finale. Pretty much every Disney Plus show suffers from that. I think I've had there the one exception I would probably say is the Clone Wars season seven and the Bad Batch. I think those ones are done a little bit better, but the live action stuff is just dog shit. The the finales, they completely um, drop the ball on. Now, this series did not have that mid-season slump. I think I mentioned that before, which is kind of good to see. Uh, you, we saw that in Mando. You know, you get these just filler garbage, waste of time episodes. It's like you're only giving us, uh, you know, six or eight episodes. Why don't you put lots of effort and make them good and tell lots of stories in there instead you just have basically MacGuffin chasing and time wasting this didn't have that nearly to the degree that the other ones did and i didn't feel that it like dragged down dragged on or just it felt like they were wasting my time like i did with other series so that is i think the one redeeming quality of ahsoka in comparison to the other ones but it just really goes to show that these problems keep persisting over the last you know what it'd be like four years now that disney plus is been putting this type of um these series out they haven't learned their lesson and that's um that i don't think that they should be rewarded for destroying the franchises that they have and i understand you're probably sitting there and saying you know zach you're part of the problem because you're actually watching them and i agree um to a certain extent but i think that like i i still do enjoy watching them enough and i want to understand what the story is and all that stuff and I like to see the characters that I, I grew up watching and, and st- you know, even though they've been, you know, butchered and mutilated and it's not even the same thing. But I mean, there's there's still there's still, I think, value in, in watching that and enjoying it. It's one of my favorite series and I, I, I'm a little bit hard pressed to straight up give up on it. I, there's certain same with like Marvel. I didn't watch She-Hulk. I didn't watch um, Ms. Marvel. There's some things that I'm, I'm and I'm also not just going to see some of these movies in the theater for the exact same purpose or the exact same point because um, it's just it's getting too much. I'm not going to reward them in that way, but I will kind of watch shows like this just because I'm I've already been attached to the character and I do want to see the story that they're trying to tell um, and try to like navigate it without my you know through the bullshit. So I understand the criticism on that, but. I think when I do reviews and stuff like this and talk about it and that message kind of resonates with other people, I think that that's ultimately how, you know, we can maybe turn the tide on some of those things, given enough people complaining about uh, the problems that they have and, you know, maybe it will trickle up. I'm not optimistic on that, but that's hopefully the way that it goes when, uh, you know, you are talking about this, even amongst friends and stuff like that, or you see the amount of people that aren't watching it. Maybe it does resonate with some and not with others, but um, that's kind of everything I wanted to talk about as far as Ahsoka goes. I like to kind of sum it up. I do think it was, it's worth a watch if you're a fan of Rebels and and the Clone Wars. Uh, Like I said, Ahsoka is one of my favorite characters and uh, obviously one that if you've only watched the main series, you probably have no idea who it is, but I really do wish that some of these characters that are kind of like off on their side missions would come into the, to the mainstream Star Wars sagas once they kind of figure all of their other sh- shit out. And I do really think that Dave Filoni and John Favreau really need to get at the helm of Lucasfilm to be able to solve some of these problems because I do think that they, they know what's going on. I think they'll be able to kind of solve some of these issues to the most extent. Um, you know, I know that Dave Filoni's wife was putting out some woke messaging before and you know, they haven't met the criticism of uh, Kenobi very positively or being able to, to solve that. But I think those two people uh, at the helm of Lucasfilm would do would be a lot better or would put them in a lot better situation than the mess that Kathleen Kennedy has made for absolute years. So those, that's kind of all my thoughts on Ahsoka. Um, and I'm really excited to see how they kind of weave this all uh, back together if there is a Dave Filoni movie. Let me know in the comments what your thoughts about the Ahsoka series are. 
overall, I think it was pretty good. Not the best, but good as far as some of the stuff that Disney has put out for Star Wars. Make sure to check out my live stream on Tuesday nights at 8.15 and subscribe to Rumble for exclusive content. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, or Telegram for episode updates and what guests are going to be appearing on the live streams. You can also check out my Substack, The Schmidt House Post. Share the show with a friend if you like what you heard this episode. That's it for this one. Thank you so much for listening and have a great day. May the force be with you. It's like poetry. It rhymes. George Lucas. Stay free. Thank you for listening to the Schmidt House Podcast. If you want to support the show, you can do so by sending Bitcoin or through Give, Send, Go. Links for those are in the description box. I would really appreciate it as I want to keep the podcast ad-free. The Schmidt House Podcast is available on the following platforms. YouTube, Odyssey, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and most importantly, Rumble. I post exclusive content on Rumble that is not found on any of the other platforms. I call them shorts. Please like this video, subscribe, and enable notifications, but most importantly, share this show with your friends. Check out the description box for more information about things that I discussed this episode and how to get in contact with me. Please reach out to me with any questions or suggestions that you have, including topics that you would like to hear me discuss. Have a great day.